What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the very important Fed meeting that is going to take place on Wednesday on November 1st. And Jerome Powell is going to be giving a speech at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And the statement is going to be released on Wednesday, November 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern. I will be live to cover both of those things. So I think it's going to be very, very exciting and interesting for the markets. And in this video, my goal is to kind of help you understand what I expect Jerome Powell to say on Wednesday what what I expect that they're going to do and what I expect for him to say and I'm going to go over exactly the one thing the Federal Reserve is trying to avoid right now it's actually they're not so much so much as so trying to avoid a recession but there's one thing particular that they're trying to avoid at the moment and that's exactly where most of the analysis and the research or the talking points are going to come from for the Federal Reserve and Chairman Jerome Powell. So hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Two more days left in October so you can get access to the 16% annual discount that again is available till the end of this month. You can get access to all the members-only private videos, all the trading view charts, all the intrinsic values available for individual stocks and individual stock reports as well. So link is going to be down below. And I do want to mention happy Halloween. So Halloween uh, sale is currently going on for all educational courses, 50 to 60% off. This is again going to happen once or twice in a year. Coupon code is going to be Halloween. Uh, and you can literally just learn lifetime access to all these fundamental and technical analysis courses, as well as options courses as well. And we've also got bundles. So take advantage of it while it's here. Link's going to be down below and we'd love to have you on board. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about the Fed calls as of this October 22nd. Okay, so these are all the banks, right, and what they're expecting for the Federal Reserve to do in the upcoming meeting on Wednesday. Bank of America expects the Federal Reserve is going to raise rates 25 basis points in December. Barclays is on the same page as B of A. Majority of the banks expect the Federal Reserve is indeed done with the raising interest rates. They're expecting them to put the rates on hold um, for the remainder of this year and even going into next year because L.H. Meyer expects 25 basis point increase in the first quarter 24. Uh, PIMCO also expects 25 basis points hike in December, similar to Barclays and Bank of America. But almost all of the other banks and institutions, Evercore, Goldman, HSBC, Jefferies, Deutsche, uh, you know, we're looking at Nomura, MUFG, PIMCO. PIMCO is a little bit different, but Standard Chartered, TD Securities, UBS, Wells Fargo, every single one of them expects rates to be steady at where they are. And uh, and and if you take a look at the probability outcomes, I don't want to go over that because it's too repetitive, but 99% probability that the Federal Reserve is going to stay, keep rates where they are on Wednesday on November 1st at 525 to 5.5%. Uh, but of course, remainder of the year is still open, especially from a Federal Reserve standpoint, because they've penciled in uh, one more 25 basis point hike. Uh, but the market is not expecting that. As you can see, majority of the institutions are expecting the Federal Reserve to keep rates where they are and not hike anymore. Um, and even based on market probabilities, they're expecting cuts beginning in June, July of next year. Now, the single most important thing that I think the that's going to be the driving factor uh, to overall Fed policy is obviously going to be inflation, right? That's a leading indicator. That's something that we have talked about since I think 12, 16 months ago. We've talked about how even though inflation and CPI is a lagging indicator for the economy, it's a leading indicator for the Fed because they're basically basing off of their policy and rate hikes on inflation data. And I do think, and this is my expectation now, that we are going to see rates stay where they are. So there's not going to be a hike. There's not going to be an, any cut. I think the policy rate's going to stay steady on hold pause from Jerome Powell. But the tone is once again going to be somewhat hawkish. And when I say somewhat hawkish, I mean that Jerome Powell is going to uh, continue to sound a little bit more hawkish. In other words, saying that our goal is to once again bring inflation down to 2% and we're going to do everything in our power to keep hammering on that goal. Basically making sure that, okay, if rates need to go higher in the future, they can and will go higher if they need to. Basically keeping that door open is what Jerome Powell is going to do, I think, in my opinion. And the reason for that, is because they are trying to avoid this one single thing, which has happened three times in the past, and that's representing on this chart, okay? Very, very important, because this is basically looking back uh, over 50 years worth of data, and we are taking into account both 
the CPI, that's the Consumer Price Index, and the Federal Funds Rate, which is the rate that's controlled by the Federal, Federal Reserve as part of their monetary policy. And as we know that in the 1970s and 1980s, we had the great inflation uh, under Paul Volcker. And what we really witnessed was every time, every single time the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates because inflation was coming down, they resulted, they basically forced it to go even higher. So if I do my technical analysis on this, right, which doesn't really apply, but what I want to show you is higher highs with inflation three times with higher lows. You can see that every single time it went higher than it did the previous time and it didn't quite come down as much as it did the previous time. Why? Because of one reason. The Federal Reserve became complacent. They dropped interest rates every single time. Right. So every single time, of course, to finally bring it down, they had to spike interest rates all the way up to almost almost 15 percent to bring a CPI finally back down and, and put the economy into a double dip recession, which we witnessed once again in the 1980s and 1982, I think was that time period, 1982, 1983, around that time, very long lasting recessions all three times. It's happened not once. Not twice. You think the Federal Reserve would have learned in this episode that, you know, lowering interest rates could spiral inflation back out of control. But no, it went back higher as soon as it lowered interest rates. So this is the one thing that Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve do not want to see. They don't want to cut interest rates in hopes of, uh, you know, the, the inflation coming down only to see it later go back higher and, and be it more aggressive and be it more uh, problematic over the long term, creating a longer lasting or more severe type of recession. And that's actually worse. And, you know, the thing is that right now we're very fixated on here. We're really, really fixated on the idea that, look, you know, inflation's back down here and, and rates, if you go across, rates are still elevated. They're still all the way up here or they're all the way up over here. Right now, majority of the market and investors and, you know, just everybody in general who thinks that Federal Reserve's too tight and they are done and they should be cutting rates is stuck in this mindset right here where inflation, they see it down here and they see rates all the way up there. And they're thinking to themselves like, why? Why is the Federal Reserve keeping rates so high? Why aren't they cutting all the way down? Like Kathy Wood would be so vocal about the Federal Reserve over tightening. Well, the idea is not to bring inflation down. And there might be some controversial uh, comments here. I repeat, the idea is not to bring inflation down. The idea and the goal is to keep inflation lower. Okay. So in other words, the goal is not for inflation to come down. The goal is for inflation to stay down. And that is far more difficult to do than just bringing it back lower. OK, so this is what the Federal Reserve is fighting for. They're not fighting for bringing inflation down. They're fighting for keeping inflation down. And there's a huge difference, just like as I have mentioned before, from an economic standpoint, it's not so much the higher interest rates that cause the problem. It's the fact that interest rates staying higher for longer causes the problem uh, because that is more damaging to the economy over time than interest rates is going higher for a few quarters and then coming back down. So so those are some things that only happen with time. And you can see that it's happened before multiple times, not once, not twice, but three times in total. So once again, if you come over here and you take a look like, look, inflation's all the way down, right? So it's coming back down. And uh, and of course, we've seen the Federal Reserve increase interest rates. Uh, every single time. And one more thing I want to point out from before is that so red line is basically the federal funds rate, right? So this right here, the gray is the recession. And in the past, I, I believe that the Federal Reserve has also prioritized recession more than inflation coming down. And that's exactly what led to this mistake of, oh, there's a recession here. So they basically cut interest rates all the way back down only to see inflation come down during the recession, but then kept rates lower for longer only for it to spiral back higher and of course be more aggressive and more brutal than what we saw um, in the past, right? Same exact thing over here, right? During a recession, they cut interest rates uh, down to, to basically support the economy and stimulate growth, which only led to higher and more longer lasting recessions in the future and longer lasting inflation cycles that we have seen. So the idea really here is for the Federal Reserve to not bring inflation down, but to keep it down without, of course, inflicting a recession on the U.S. economy. And the only way they do that is by obviously doing it in a very, very modest pace. So I do think that Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve is going to keep that door open for 
potential rate hikes um, in the future if the data suggests. And I think learning from the previous lessons, they are going to prioritize uh, bringing inflation down more than prioritizing causing a recession for the U.S. economy, in which I think Jerome Powell has been very vocal on saying that they are expecting and even welcoming of some weakness or softening in the labor market. So given how, you know, where we are with the higher interest rates and even after the fact that inflation's come down, a lot of people might be asking questions. Why is the Federal Reserve not cutting already? Well, that's because, first of all, inflation is nowhere near close to the Fed's target. And second of all, it's only this much worth of data. We need months and quarters and even years worth of data suggesting that inflation is not only coming down, but it's actually staying down and staying at those levels uh, as well. And only then I think the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell will be confident in starting to think or consider about cutting interest rates. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to, again, go over that. And there's one more chart that's, I think, very interesting and you know, basically what this means is when volatility is higher and more elevated at over 20, that's when markets median daily move increases to over one and a half, almost one and a half percent. And this is something that we have talked about in our previous videos. And I've got a whole case study and some statistical data supporting this as well as as soon as we get up to over 30. Right. Uh, so this right here is based off of 20. So this every time it goes over 20, we see a median move in the S&P over one and a half percent. But as soon as it gets up over 30, right? So everything on the right side of, of the scale is a really, really rare occurrence in the market. And this is where a lot of the opportunity lies, right? This is where, you know, majority of that opportunity, dollar cost averaging, or even long trade opportunities in the S&P 500 are. Um, and of course, majority of the times volatility has traded between 10 and 30. Over 90, I think 98% or 90% of the times, uh, the volatility has been over between 10 and 30. So, just wanted to share this very, very quickly. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget, we got a Halloween sale right now at the moment. Uh, again, this is going to be 50 to 60% off. Uh, coupon code is going to be Halloween. Uh, take advantage of it. Link's going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.